Okay, this is Gene Bosler, and I'm in Houston, Texas. And I just can't get away from, from dealing with pines. I have probably posted more videos about pines than any other. You would have thought it was live oaks, since I work with live oaks a lot. Okay, so this landscape lighting system was installed by a tree climber who did not use spikes, I note, which is good. But a few days later, a landscaper who's installing a new landscape here. They've taken some, you know, fairly commendable measures to minimize the impact to the root system, but it's pretty easy to stress out a root system. People think that you need a bobcat or a or a backhoe to compress, uh, compact the soil, but uh, its soil can be compacted with a lot less than that. So somebody pointed out that the sawdust was present on the tree. He said, well, that's just from where they drilled. But just to make sure, let me call my arborist. And so here I am, and I'm finding little holes associated with the... I mean, this looks very much like ambrosia beetle right here. This looks very much like ambrosia beetle right here. These little... Uh, not ambrosia beetle, I'm sorry, uh, Sawyer beetle. These little holes Look very much like ambrosia beetle, myoplatypus. And the color of the sawdust. You note that I don't call it frass, because it's my understanding it has not been through the digestive tract of the, of the, of the beetle, but been pushed back out. The color is, is consistent with the platypus, the myoplatypus and ambrosia beetle. And they make little, uh, as we know from previous videos, they make little loosely constructed tubes that are, I assume, a mix of saliva or in sawdust. They come apart really easily, which, let me focus upon these, this little tube, which is on the roof of my sample jar. It is actually quite well constructed. It's, it's hard to break apart. It's not the loosely constructed ones I found with the live myoplatypus specimens. It's almost more like termite. And I've been pulling these out of the sawdust. For instance, there's a hole here and another hole here. And sometimes this white dust uh, this, uh, is fairly heavily packed in underneath the loose, le loose outer bark. So underneath it, there's, there's been some. These tubes don't come apart readily. So it's somewhat different from my previous observations of the myoplatypus ambrosia beetle. It's been a week and it hasn't spread. So I have this one specimen. It's kind of deteriorated. It's, it's a real lousy specimen. Its outer wings are broken off, but you can see the uh, the scoop on its butt. The red dust here that's kind of the color of the uh, sawdust pr uh, produced by the or the, the pitch tube produced by the Ips calligraphus. Focus. There we are. But not much at all. And it hasn't spread. So in an abundance of caution, because the tree is green. That's the other thing is that there's no pitch tubes anywhere on this tree. Uh, there are no Sawyer beetle holes. But there are a few what look to be fairly fresh ambrosia holes. This looks like Sawyer beetle. Hold on, let me see this. Actually, this is where he was he was drilling and made a few test holes and moved them. So I think we might have invited an attack with our with our uh, landscape lighting installation, and then um, the tree might have successfully repelled it. But I'd say we fertilized the heck out of it and possibly even treated for pine bark beetles. Meanwhile, I'm going to see if I can find a step ladder and take a closer look at these holes up here. Uh, here, 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 and here. 
Oh, and on the right too. So my initial, uh, it doesn't make sense, myoplatypus beetle. There's no evidence of pine bark beetle, Ips, or dendroctinus. Info at wideworldoftrees.com or leave a comment. Thank you.